Crawford, Deputy Bridgemith. Um, first of all, I want to really criticise very strongly the reaction of the Taoiseach, uh, Leo Varadkar, to uh, Deputy Joan Collins's leaders this morning. Um, it was quite shocking, actually, what he responded by saying, and that was that the question of a referendum on water doesn't matter. It doesn't affect the Irish people. It doesn't have any impact on our lives. It doesn't matter. It's neither here nor there. It's an academic question. It doesn't bother any of us. And the other referenda that he wants to table on blasphemy, etc., does bother us and does have an impact on our lives. This is a disgraceful remark because we have been through uh, three years between 2014 and 2017, effectively, where the biggest response in the history of the state of a people's movement was seen to an issue that governments try to impose on those people. And that response included many communities uh, being treated and manhandled very badly, not scenes reminiscent of Barcelona or Catalonia, but certainly very serious scenes of abuse and violence by Gardaí in working class estates on the north side where people were blocking meters. Some of that resulted in people going to prison. Some of it resulted in many uh, residents having to sacrifice a lot of their ordinary lives to get up early in the morning, to mobilise on their streets in the freezing cold and all sorts of weather. People in areas like Clondalk and Drimna, Donny Carney, Coolock, Finglas, Dunleary, all over the place, and indeed places I'm not so familiar with, like Toker and uh, Ballyfehan, etc., in Cork, um, 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 mobilised and organised to stop metering and to protest. And then, furthermore, they mobilised and organised on a, a state and road by road basis to ensure that every member of the community was aware of the issues to do with water charges, that every member of the community understood why it was necessary to mount a campaign of resistance that included non-payment. And one of the major reasons that ran through the theme of that opposition was to prevent the privatisation of our most pre precious resource. Now, in 2014, in the early part of that year, I organised a conference with my union, Unite, to look at the question of the commodification of water. And we had a woman over from Bolivia called Marcella Oliveira. Marcella's brother had led a campaign in Bolivia to stop the privatisation of the water there by Bechtel and by Suez and by other major multinationals who had moved in to gobble up a precious commodity of a people that were already impoverished and excluded. And thankfully, their campaign in Bolivia resulted in preventing the privatisation of water. It also resulted, however, very tragically in major riots and the deaths of three of its citizens. And Marcella Oliveira, when she came to Dublin, explained this very carefully. We also had people from Paris, from Hamburg, from uh, Munich, who were all ordinary citizens campaigning for the remunicipalisation of their precious commodity of water. And so, in different parts of the world, including the developed world of Europe, there's resistance to the privatisation of water, and this was a key feature for people who marched, who refused to pay, who organised in their communities, an awareness that once you put a price on a commodity and an essential service, then that commodity and essential service becomes subject to the rigours of the market. It's open for competition, it's open to be bought and sold, it's open to be used and abused by giant multinational corporations who make extraordinary profit out of the very fundamentals of life. And water is a fundamental of life. You can live for many days without foods, as Bobby Sands and others have proved uh, historically for over 70 days. You cannot survive more than three or four days without water. It is absolutely the essence of life itself, that and the air we breathe. Um, and maybe someday there will be an attempt to privatise that. Some would argue, indeed, that that's already been done. Because if you're, for example, living in Mexico City, the poor live in the dirty, smelly, polluted part. The wealthy live in the where the clean air is in the hills. And so a, an inverted form of privatisation already takes place 
uh, in privatisation of the air already takes place, it, particularly in the third world because of the conditions of pollution people are forced to live in. Um, and so privatisation of water was absolutely central to the objective of the tens of thousands of people who fought and marched and organised throughout this country. So the Taoiseach, I'm afraid, once again is way behind the people and has got them wrong and doesn't really get the ordinary people in this country. He doesn't get them on the question of uh, choice and, and the Eighth Amendment. He doesn't really get them on the question of strikes and how they fight to improve their wages and stop the privatisation of their buses. And he certainly doesn't get them on the question of water charges. So it's an extraordinary insult how he responded to Deputy Collins this morning and therefore to the population at large. People should check it out. His response was nothing but class snobbery and disdainful towards the population in this country who successfully, actually, like the people of Bolivia, have prevented the privatisation of water. But the argument that it will always and forever be saved from privatisation is as spurious as the bill that you've put in front of us. And that bill is as full of complications and loopholes and obfuscations and different interpretations as a, a complex set of molecules that one would look at under a microscope if you're trying to figure out chemistry or something like that. And uh, therefore, and it's obvious, and I'm going to make the point further on, that what's been attempted here is to keep water charges open for the future, not just by the back door, but by the front door, by the windows, by the skylight, by whatever means necessary, the question of the sell-off and the commodification of our water is being left open by this government. And that is why uh, we need a better response from the Taoiseach to uh, the need for a referendum. The bill has gone through second stage and uh, as Deputy Collins said, they would like to leave it there to rot and die and wither away rather than deal with this very, very fundamental and crucial issue. And I would argue it absolutely does matter to the people and it will make a difference to their lives if it was enshrined in our constitution that our water could never, ever be privatised. Um, but I do want to start by responding to the ministers who are pushing this bill, both yourself, Minister, and Minister Murphy, but also, indeed, your assistants, Deputy Cowan and the people in Fianna Fáil who are helping you to push this bill and who are actually giving you the cover that you require uh, after the fact that um, the country rose up, resisted, and actually won the question of water charges being abolished. You claimed, or Minister Murphy claimed as a fact, the great work that was done by Irish Water in recent years as proof of the necessity to create this, this utility. And he counter, counterposed the reduction in boil notices and the leaks treated to the efforts made before the creation of Irish Water. And this is a hilarious and ridiculous comparison. And the reason I say that is because both Fianna Fáil and your party have consistently, over the decades, deliberately underfunded the local authorities deliberately seen the systematic, overseen the systematic neglect of the basic water services. I remember when Brian Cowan was Minister for Finance and was crowing about all the extra fiscal space we had, the billions we had to spend, and at the same time, during his tenure as both Taoiseach and Minister for Finance, he never did that to fix a leak, to clean the waters, to stop the sewage uh, flowing into our rivers. Underfunding of the water service was absolutely dramatic under his watch, under Fianna Gael's watch and under previous Fianna Fáil Green Party Labour coalitions of one hue or another. So to compare what was done with Irish Water, thrown millions at them so that they could pay themselves bonuses, so that they could engage consultants, so that they could give uh, contracts for metering to Dennis O'Brien and SiteServe. Millions, absolutely millions, I haven't got the absolute figures here in front of me, but everybody's been made familiar with them over the year, to the deliberate rundown of local authority funding and water utility services over previous decades just doesn't hold water, pardon the pun. And as for Minister Cowan's fiction, that he recited in the Dáil, worth a literally Nobel Prize maybe someday, that the desperate attempt by Fianna Fáil to rewrite history and to call the actual defeat of water charges there, uh, to their credit. 
I don't remember Fianna Fáil being out blocking metres, advocating non-payment, mobilising hundreds of thousands of people nationally and locally time and time and time again to ensure that this became the major issue of the last election, the major issue that forced uh, a deal between these two major uh, Conservative parties. And in this fiction, um, Fianna Fáil have looked into the heart and decided that for some reason it, because they thought about it, people didn't pay water charges. And how odd, given that the very idea of water charges originates from the soldiers of destiny, how could Junior Minister Cowan uh, believe that he was free to engage in this fiction? And the reality that can't be changed and that those who marched and protest and blocked meters installation, who resisted and who organised on a day and night basis, the reality is that they know that it's different, regardless of the fictional um, ramblings of, of, of uh, Junior Minister Cowan. And much of what I want to say after this has been highlighted by others, but I'll make a general point that many here and many in the media try to justify water charges by invoking environmental concerns, by dismissing the actual charge itself and disparaging those who are active and took on the forces of the state. It's just a small charge. Water has to be paid for. The usual suspects don't want to pay for anything. A litany of reasons used to justify this, that and the other. I still hear bitter commentators in a bewilderment of statements that water charges could have caused such a huge movement to challenge the powers that be after so many years. I hear Mr Cowan's anger and I understand it, that after eight years, when they thought the Irish people would accept any amount of austerity, they were shocked and outraged that finally the population stood up to them. And this rising was not based on ignorance or misunderstanding. It was based on knowing exactly what the game was, that the charges were about commodifying an essential public good that we already paid for, and that commodification was the prelude, as everything else, else is, to, uh, to privatisation, to greater the charges to Dennis O'Brien and other industries and bosses who can make huge profits for it. We know what happened across the world when charges um, um, followed privatisation. A lack of investment and often polluted services. In Britain, I remember clearly when the whole uh, Yorkshire County was without water for months after Maggie Thatcher privatised it because the private utilities uh, could not deliver clean water services. There have been outbreaks of cholera in South Africa when they uh, privatised the water there. And in Brazil and beyond, people have suffered Veolia's um, treatment of the water services at the hands of the multinationals to whom the profit is God, not the environment. Um, it's been clear from the expert report that a huge red herring is caused around the question of the average users in Ireland. And I don't want to go into the complexities of it because people with better minds than me have done so here, people who are on my side on this issue. And I'd like to refer to the uh, comments by Deputy Murphy, uh, Deputy uh, Ono Brin, and Deputy Richard Boy Barrett on this. But there is a real strong attempt here to confuse the Irish population, and as I said earlier, to leave not just the front door, but the back door and the windows et al. open to bring in water charges in the future. The crucial question is that while all this is happening, and while there's an attempt to implement some kind of a charge for overusage, there is no evidence that the average Irish man, woman or child uh, is guilty of overusage of water, of wastage of water. In fact, Irish water themselves have given you the average figures that show that the average usage here is below the average use in Britain, Denmark, etc., where they do actually have metres and when, where they have charges. But what we're trying to do here is to bring in a system whereby the average use will be reduced over a period of five years. By that time, you'll have another government. There'll be more and more people being charged with. There's confusion about whether a household of four, five, or six uh, is then calculated on, 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 on the basis of having more allowances. I mean, you could live on your own and use the same amount of water. You could live with two people and use the same amount of water. But generally speaking, you will need to use more if there's two, three or four of you in the house. And that's not rocket science. That's the obvious. Um, and in a society where the average, average occupancy in households is increasing because the crisis has led so many young people and other extended family members to remain at home uh, until they're in their 30s, 
There is an increasing number of households that are being made up of four adults. There is an average household size, according to the statistics, of 2.75. But if there's four adults in the house and they use slightly more than the average, then are they water wasters, Minister? Are they guilty of wasting this precious commodity? More guilty than Irish Water are for not having fixed the leaks? More guilty than you and previous governments are for not uh, investing in the infrastructure and attempting to address the real problem where over 40% of our water, w clean, treated water by the way, was being leaked out through the system. An individual usage figure was something that Fianna Fáil argued for, but we still have an overall household figure. We did the sums on it, and we say that if the average is 133 litres per person per, per day, the average household allowance will be 622. For four adults using the average amount, it will be 540 between them, and it only requires them to use less than 20% extra water per person to face charges. So by hook or cro by crook, you, with the help of Junior Minister Barry Cowan and his Soldiers of Destiny party, are determined, absolutely determined, to bring water charges into this country. And if you can't do it in your lifetime, however long your confidence and supply agreement lasts you, uh, you are leaving it open for whomever of you, and possibly both of you together in coalition, if you were honest with the people of Ireland, that's exactly what you would do after the next election, is to join together, because there isn't the thickness of a cigarette paper in difference between you in policy. All of this is charade, all of this is cosmetic, all of this is fictitious. And to claim that Fianna Fáil have saved the Irish people on the question of water charges is uh, it's a great joke, and I'm sure it'll do the rounds um, in the water movement and in the communities about how funny Barry Cowan is. He's actually a scream when it comes to describing what the history of this movement is. Um, I will finish on saying this to you, that I think that the bill is probably going to get through because you have the backing of Fianna Fáil, you have the two big Conservative blocs here backing you. In the past you had the backing of the Greens at times, or you had the backing of Labour at times to pursue water charges and to pursue people for them. But there is a growing radical movement in this country who can see through you and who can see through the neoliberal agenda of the class that you represent, which is to take every commodity, everything that moves, uh, including health and including transport and all of the decent public services. You've done it with the bins. Look at the disaster that waste management has become in this country. And I know the knee-jerk will reaction be, but that's because Breed Smith, you told people not to pay for it. Our movement argued that once you commodify an essential service and begin to pay for it, then it becomes the subject of the market, as is the rules of the European Union. No government, no local authority, no state body can maintain control over a service that is paid for without allowing the private operators in on the act. And that is the very reason why we said all of our essential services should be paid for through direct taxation. And where are we going to come from for, for more taxation? One word, Apple. It's all over the media tonight. We're being told, Pascal Donoghue's being told, take the money or I'm bringing you to court. I'm going to sue you. Take the money off Apple. 13 billion and possibly even 19 if you add in the interest. What is wrong with the heads of the... people who run this country. Imagine what could be done with that. And yet we are saying to a greedy corporation like Apple, uh, listen, we're, you know, you are great, just bring loads of jobs here, and you haven't made enough profit, so we're not going to touch those billions that you owe us in taxes. And they're not the only ones, because as we'll see during the course of next week's discussion on the budget, there are at least 13 other giant corporations in this country who are paying less than 1% effective tax. There is an average uh, so-called effective tax rate being collected of about 9%, but there's 13 declared corporations of enormous proportions with enormous profits who are paying less than 1%. And yet, and yet your government wants to come, your government wants to come government after ordinary theater. families, ordinary working families, uh, the disabled pensioners to pay more when they know that they have already paid for their services through their taxation. 
extra money was taken from the car tax to cover water service charges. In the past, when Fianna Fáil had to do a U-turn on this, they said extra money would be taken from PRSI to cover water services. Now, I think you need to, at some point, all of the Conservative parties in this House own up and just declare that really you're not for the little people. It is only the big guys you care about because that's what we see as the little people, as the ordinary people. We see all your efforts going to support, to help, to uh, bail out, to bring leniency on the big guys and the rest of us can go to hell, can go to jail, can go out marching, but at the end of the day, you two will do deals with each other and you have a junior minister on this side of the house who will back you up very nicely. Um, I think shame on Fianna Fáil. I think they really ought to be called out on this one. Um, obviously shame on you and your government, but I think this, the, the people on this side of the house who are trying to hide and go for cover and pretend that they are the heroes of the Irish people really need to be called out. I leave it at that, Minister, and uh, I, I hope we get another chance to, uh, to debate this further next week. Before I call on Deputy John Collins, uh,